If you've been following my channel for a while, you may have seen this build, but I had an opportunity to build another one for a client and thought I'd go into more detail on how I made it. I do have plans available for download if you want to make one. I started by planning a single board to use for the sides. I want the grain to flow all the way around the box, kind of like a one continuous piece. I cut a narrower piece for the lid. Normally I'd cut the lid from the sides out of the same board, but the lumber yard has slim pickings that day for wider boards, so I opted to cut the sides from a separate piece and just did my best to find some nice grain that lined up well. Once I had the stock milled to thickness, I marked the boards in sequential order, side, front, side, back, so I could keep them in order, making sure when they're assembled the grain flows all the way around the box. I just think it's a really nice subtle detail. When I cut the boards apart, I set up a stop block at the table saw and cut the base pieces and its corresponding top pieces at the same time to ensure they would be the exact same length. This will make sure the lid and the base line up exactly when assembled. To join the side pieces together, I'm going to use box joints. So I set up my miter gauge with a stop in it and used a scrap piece milled to the same width as the joint to give me the correct spacing. I made sure my spacer was long enough to touch the front and back of the teeth of the saw blade just to make sure they're exactly parallel. Then I did a test piece and adjusted as needed. If it's too loose, it'll look bad. If it's too tight, I'll probably break a finger trying to force the joint together. To start the piece that doesn't lap over the stop block, I just flipped the first piece around and used it as a spacer to cut that first joint. Once I was satisfied with the fit of my test piece, I used a marking gauge to score across where the finger joints are going to be cut to prevent tear out on the exit side of the blade. This score mark will be sanded away when finished. Then I just took my time cutting all the joints. If you push too fast, the force of the blade can push the workpiece up off the table resulting in a sloppy joint. The thin top pieces felt a little sketchy cutting them by themselves, so I added a scrap piece of plywood to give me something a little taller and more substantial to clamp these little pieces to. While I had the dado blade set up, I cut some scrap plywood pieces with the same finger pattern in it to use as a clamping call, so I can get direct pressure over the joint without hitting the adjoining board. To be sure I had enough clearance so the edges wouldn't interfere, I used a chisel to chamfer each edge to give me a little extra space. When I ripped the sides originally, I left them a little wide just in case my finger joints didn't come out perfectly. If you're just a few thou off in your setup, that will add up on every joint resulting in the joint being either too wide or too short. It's just a good safety precaution to make sure you come out right. So I'm just ripping them to their exact width now that uh, I know where the end joint ended up at. Now that I have my sides ready to go, I'm just milling up some lumber for the top. I'm using some mahogany as an accent wood. I spent a few minutes arranging the boards so the grain flows from one board to the next helping disguise the joint. Floating tins aren't necessary for strength on long grain to long grain glue ups, but it does help the alignment to keep the boards from slipping around while trying to tighten the clamps. While the glue is drying on the top, I resawed a piece for the bottom and glued it up. Since the bottom is too thin for using some floating tenons to help with alignment, I just put a couple of clamps at the ends of the joint to keep everything in plane. 
I needed to cut a dado on the sides to accept the lid as well as for the bottom. They need to be stop dados so they don't blow through the finger joint. So I'm using my workpiece to mark out the start and stop points on the fence. Now when I cut the dados, I will gently drop the piece down on the router bed at the start line, push it through to the stop line, shut off the router, and lift my workpiece off. I did that same process for all the side pieces. While I had the bit set up in the router table, I cut the dado for the lid. I did a test dado first in some scrap wood to be sure I had a good fit, made a little adjustment, and then cut the final piece. The final step for the lid was to cut a decorative chamfer on the top. So I set up a sacrificial fence, tipped my blade to 45 degrees, and raised it up into the fence. That was just a real nice way to cut a quick chamfer on the edges. One final thing before gluing up the case is I need to square up the rounded ends left over by the router bit so the bottom and top will just drop right in. I laid out the parts and used a little double stick tape to attach my clamping calls I made earlier so I wouldn't have to fumble around trying to hold them in place while tightening the clamps. Since I have a nice tight fit and standard wood glue has water in it would probably swell the wood making it impossible to get the joint together, I'm going to use epoxy. No swelling and when freshly mixed it acts like a lubricant and the pieces just slide together nice and easy. I did the same process for the lid and took a little extra care to be sure all the parts were square. If one is out of square, the lid won't close in line with the rest of the box. After the glue dried, I noticed the sides weren't perfectly flush with one another, so I just took a few swipes with my hand plane to flush them up. Now it's time to install the hinges. I knifed in their location and used a chisel to chop out most of the waste and then came back with the router plane to get a nice clean flat bottom. A few test fits and cleaning up the shoulders I had a really nice fitting hinge. I did the same technique for the hinges on the lid and then I used a self-centering drill bit to pre-drill for the screws. To be sure I didn't strip out any screws or scratch the heads or anything like that, I drove them in by hand and test fitted each one before applying the finish. I'm now moving on to building the interior of the box to hold the shot glasses and whiskey bottle. I resawed some 8 quarter stocks so the grain on the boards for the left and the right glass holders would be book matched. I just love those kind of subtle design touches. I ripped the board to its final width, then tipped the blade to an arbitrary angle, one that I thought would look nice, and then I cut a chamfer on the leading edge. I switched over to a data blade to cut the dados to accept the sides and back support of the glass holder. I ran the sides and back support to the thickness planer until I had a nice snug fit. I just took my time, little by little sneaking up on it, so I could just slide it in without being forced. Now it's time to determine the placement of the shot glasses. I played around with an arrangement that I thought looked nice, basically staggering them in the field, clustering them towards the bottle end of the box. I then marked the center of each hole so I'd know where to drill. I used some calipers to measure across the glass about where I wanted it to be held by the wood, and then found a Forstner bit that was as close as I could to that size. I clamped it down for safety and drilled out the holes. I then set up a quarter inch router bit in the router table and rounded over each hole. I pre-finished all the parts and glued up each assembly. Rather than clamping each piece, I used a headless pin nailer to pin the pieces together while the glue dries. Those pins are so small, the mark they make is pretty much disappears in the wood grain. I dropped a shot glass in place, then measured the distance between the bottom of the glass and what would be the bottom of the box. 
and build up a spacer block to take up that space. This will prevent someone from accidentally pushing the shot glass down too hard, risking cracking the holder or getting a glass stuck. I covered the block with felt to give the glass a soft landing and installed it. I'm taping off the box so that it won't get any spray adhesive on the edges. Next was to cut all the pieces of felt to line the box. One of the most common questions I get is what type of glue do I use? Whether it's epoxy, wood glue, or in this case spray adhesive, I'm always happy to share. For epoxy, I use West Systems brand. For standard PVA wood glues, Tight Bond. And for spray adhesive, I usually use 3M. But today, they were out of 3M, so I bought the heavy duty stuff. Unfortunately, after using it, the edges of the felt peeled up and just didn't stick well. Not anywhere near as strong as the 3M stuff. And I ended up having to tear it all out and redo it the next day. I also want to mention that the other glues I talked about are not a sponsor. They just work great and are reliable. So far I don't have a sponsor for my channel. The projects I build are commissioned by clients, and the editing time and production costs of running the YouTube channels are paid for by you, the viewers. The people who buy the t-shirts, the people who download project plans, who help me out on Patreon, who watch the uh, pre-roll YouTube ads. So uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, your time spent here. All right, now back to the build. Once I got each piece glued in place, I used a plastic putty knife to put pressure to wet the glue in and push out any creases or bubbles. I then went around the outside edge with a sharp razor blade and cut away the excess. One last piece I need to make is the holder for the whiskey bottle. I chucked up a piece of wood in the lathe and turned its diameter down just a tiny bit larger than the diameter of the neck of the whiskey bottle. Then I took it to the spindle sander and sanded a notch for the bottle to rest in. Since cutting small parts are dangerous on the table saw, once I was satisfied with the shape I cut it to length on the van saw. I used the bottle as a gauge to help decide where to attach the holder. Once I decided, I cut a portion of the felt out so I could glue the holder down to the bottom. To be sure it stays put, I screwed it and glued it. The screw is acting as a clamp while the glue dries. I used epoxy here since the surrounding felt is going to prevent the holder from sitting firmly against the bottom, and epoxy is gap filling so it filled up the void. I used some blue tape to protect the edge of the felt while I slid in the glass holders. To secure the holders, I drizzled a little epoxy down underneath them. The last thing to do is to add the hinges back on and uh, add a clasp to keep the box shut. Then I loaded it up. I think it's a pretty handsome looking whiskey box to display your favorite whiskey and have a few drinks with some friends. And remember, if you'd like to build a box, there are plans available on my website. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, sharing, following me on Instagram, joining me on Patreon, hitting the bell. Thank you.